Welcome to the Philip Merrill College of Journalism. My name is Katie. I'm a sophomore journalism major. I'm focusing in sports broadcasting. I'm a reporter, anchor, and senior producer for the Left Bench TV. I also run their social media, and I'm a sports anchor for Capital News Service here at Maryland. Um, so first on our tour, we're going to go into the news bubble. So the news bubble is open 24-7 for journalism majors only with swipe access. Um, so it's just a place for us to go do our homework, do projects, essays, papers, articles, whatever we need. Um, so that's a really good benefit of being a journalism major. Also, free printing, which everyone's really jealous of. So that's really good that we have that. So this is the Office of Student Services. This is where our advisors are and our assistant dean, Josh Madden. Our advisors are the best advisors at the entire university, in my opinion, but in everyone else's opinion as well. They will meet with you and sit down with you for anything you need, if you want to go abroad, if you're struggling with what classes to take, anything. They are such a helpful resource for all journalism majors, and they're great. So right here is one of our classrooms. If the lights aren't on right now, but if they were on, you would see that there are about 18 Macs in there. All of our classrooms are equipped with Macs. Um, so we have a lot of great technology in that aspect. And there's only 18 seats in there because all of our skills classes are capped at 18, which really benefits in the aspect of getting one-on-one -on -one time with your professor. They can tell you what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right, what you need to work on, how to improve yourself. And you don't get that in bigger classrooms, but you get that here. Um, fun fact about our professors, we like to say that we hire people not just with a journalism degree, but people who are actual, actual journalists in the field. So they really know what they're talking about when they're telling us things. Um, and another fun fact about the college is we're a very small college. There's only about 500 people here, students, that includes PhD and graduates. Um, and undergrads, of course. And so my class personally is about 110 maybe. Um, so we like to keep it small and I think that shows in our classrooms. So right here is our help desk, which I like to call our equipment desk. Um, so right here you can get everything you need for any of your classes, cameras, broadcast cameras, tripods, wireless mics, they have it all. And the best thing about being a, Mer a Merrill student is that you don't have to buy anything for any of your classes, we have them all here. Um, so you don't have to buy any of that equipment. You can come here anytime, rent out what you need, you can go film games with it, go film your stand-ups, whatever you need to do. Um, it's here for you, which is, and you can do it as a freshman. You don't need to have any type of standing to get this. So that's a really awesome perk of being a Merrill student. second floor of Knight Hall now, which is the Journalism College, in case I didn't already say that. And we're walking past some classrooms now. We have classrooms on all three floors, and they're all also equipped with 18 Macs, like I said, um, just like the classroom downstairs. And we're about to come near our Dean Suite. So the really awesome thing about our Deans, our Dean of the College, Lucy Daglish, and then our Associate Dean, Rafael Lorenti, they are so involved with everyone. Um, you could honestly go in there at any time and just say like, Raphael, I gotta talk to you. And he'll sit down and he'll talk to you. You don't get that at a lot of colleges, but at this, you do. He makes an effort to know everyone. He wants to know people's names. And so that's the Dean Suite right there. You could walk in there at literally any moment and he'll sit down if you have a question, concern you from the top. So like, right, career, journalism, they're there for you and they're there for everyone. So we're still on the second floor here, we're in the hallway where a lot, of, a lot of our professors have their offices. And just to show how accomplished a lot of our professors are, right here is Dana Priest. She is best known for working at the Washington Post. She has two Pulitzer Prize awards, one with the CIA and one with the Walter Reed Hospital. And she teaches a capstone class here and a lot of our investigative journalism classes. So another really accomplished professor that we have here is Mark Feldstein. He's our Rich, Richard E. Chair of Broadcast here at Merrill. And some fun facts about him, he has two Peabody Awards, nine Emmys, and he worked at ABC and CNN for over 20 years. And I had to take a Scandals class with him, and it's really awesome getting to hear about investigative journalism right from him, because he actually himself exposed so many scandals. He was in on cases. He tells us stuff about how he was called to court um, to talk and be a witness on things. So that's really awesome getting to hear that firsthand experience from him. And right here is Kevin Blackstone's office. For those of you who don't know who Kevin is, he works at ESPN, PBS, and the Washington Post. Um, you can catch him on his show Around the Horn on ESPN, which I personally love to watch. It's really cool seeing one of my own professors on it. Um, but he, if you want, 
internship at USPN, this is your guy to go to, and he works very closely with our, our Shirley Povich Center for Sports Journalism, which is an awesome asset for us to have. So we're on the third floor of Knight Hall now, and this brings us to our first two bureaus of Capital News Service. Capital News Service is a wire service, and it also is a capstone class that juniors and seniors can take here at Merrill and they produce stories, they write them, they can also be published by the Washington Post. It's a really awesome way to get some clips and get your name out there. And that brings us to our first one. So our first bureau is the Social Engagement Bureau. It's ran by Ronald Yaros, Yaros and they basically focus on social media and analyze how that moves and with the trends of society. So this is our Data Bureau, our second bureau of Capital News Service. Um, this summer, these students actually, with the Howard Center for Investigative Journalism, produced a project called Code Red, and they studied how heat affects low-income housing markets in Baltimore, and our students also partnered with the engineering school for that, so it's kind of a fun fact about that, and they basically just analyzed the data that they received in order to tell that story in the right way. So now we're at our Shirley Povich Center for Sports Journalism, which is kind of my forte. I love this center. Um, they host symposiums every year, and they host events every month. For example, we like to bring back our very famous alum, Scott Van Pelt, for those of you who know who he is. And we also had a panel with Tim Kirchin last semester and the semester before that. Um, so basically, they're just a resource for every student here who's interested in sports journalism. Um, it's currently ran by George Solomon, who is the longtime sports editor of the Washington Post. I actually interviewed George for one of my class projects last year, and he was awesome to talk to, and he actually gave me a lot of advice just in the sports journalism world in general, which really shows how much they want to help and how much they want to talk to you. And they'll help you find internships, jobs, whatever you really need from them, they're a resource for you. So this is our new Howard Center of Investigative Journalism. They got $3 million from the Scripps Howard Foundation, and basically students just work really closely with faculty members in order to produce big stories that are published and seen by many people. Um, our Code Red project that I talked on earlier was actually published through the Howard Center in partnership with NPR. And we have more stories being published in collab with NPR, AP, and PBS NewsHour. Um, the center is ran by Kathy Best, who came to us. She was the longtime editor of the Seattle Times. And she is just really adamant about getting young people, such as myself, you, everyone here, um, in investigative journalism. So right now we're in our career center, which is actually where our internship director, Adrian Flynn, works. Adrian is amazing. She is a resource for everyone here at the college um, to get an internship by the time they graduate. It's actually a requirement and it counts for credit to have an internship before you graduate. Um, and But our students go above and beyond with that. I believe the going record um, for the most internships what someone has had here is 12. So it's essentially an internship every semester, which goes to show our students really want to be out there and get that experience. And the awesome thing about our location is that we're right next to DC, we're very close to Baltimore and Annapolis, and publications and networks there, they know the quality of our students and they want us to come intern for them. And Adrienne's awesome, she will sit down with you anytime you need her, she will rip your resume apart um, and build it in the best way for you to get that, in that position and get that experience that's necessary for the real world. Now we're at our broadcast bureau of Capital News Service. Basically what goes into that is where there is a live show every Wednesday and Thursday at 6.30. If you live in PG County or Montgomery County, you can watch it live on TV. But if not, it's broadcasted live on our website and live streamed on YouTube as well, which is how my parents personally, personally watch it. Um, I have a lot of experience with CNS so far. This semester I just started sports anchoring. Um, which is a really cool thing because as a sophomore, I'm not sure if that's ever been done before, but here I am. Um, I anchor every Thursday at 6.30 live, which is an awesome thing to add to your resume to say you, you were on a live show like that. Um, but yeah, students go out during the day, they report, they put packages together, and it's broadcasted live for everyone to see. Okay, so I'm Mel Coffey. I'm the Broadcast Bureau Director for Capital News Service, CNS TV. Um, as an incoming student to Maryland, your, ch your opportunities start immediately. As a freshman coming to campus, you'll have chances to volunteer to work on our broadcast. We do a live broadcast, which airs two or three days a week. 
and it goes live to Montgomery and Prince George's counties and then we stream it live on YouTube on our website on YouTube as well and then we have it uploaded to our CNS channel as well. So coming into the college on day one if you wanted to get involved working on the crew you can do things to help in the production of that newscast, running camera, running teleprompter, learning how to floor direct, do audio, and eventually TD, technical direct, and direct a newscast. We have volunteers who've started in their freshman year, they've stayed with it through their senior year, so you're around it all the time, you're getting feedback and hearing feedback about the journalism content, as well as being involved in the production aspects of the newscasts. So after your sophomore year, beginning first semester junior year, if you have progressed through the curriculum in such a way, you could be allowed to start taking capstone classes. So CNS Broadcast Bureau is a capstone class. This is after you've had law and ethics and other production classes. And when you get into a capstone, which could be as early as first semester junior year or last semester senior year, depending on what you do, you are then put through a rigorous um, lifelike experience of covering news. There are several capstones. The Annapolis Bureau is a multi-platform capstone, and they tend to cover Annapolis and the State House and things that are happening from a legislative point of view, as well as other stories. The DC Bureau covers Capitol Hill, and the Broadcast Bureau, which is based on campus here in College Park, we cover a number of things. We'll go to Capitol Hill. We are there today, for example, covering something in Congress. Um, we will cover the Supreme Court as big cases come up that are relevant to Marylanders. We will cover things in Annapolis at the State House, and we cover Maryland. We don't tend to cover stories on campus. We really get you out there. And if there's a story that's interesting to people in Maryland, whether it's political or sports or a feature story or just an interesting story about people, you know, our goal is to get you used to covering those kinds of stories so that when you leave here in your first job, it's just not a big deal. You know what to do, how to go about doing it. You understand the pressures of being on deadline every day, and you learn how to master that while you're in this class right here. Um, there are messages coming in, that's why I keep looking over. Um, we cover stories in Baltimore. We're working with a capstone class, a Baltimore capstone class this semester, on a series of long form reports looking at incidents and things that are happening in Baltimore and trying to provide some context and perspective rather than covering a shooting here, a shooting there. What's happening? Why is it happening? What's the impact on children? So we're taking some time to look at the longer form impact of these kinds of stories and putting them together with other people in different capstones and hopefully getting these aired on commercial stations as well as offering them to our client who subscribe to CNS Capital News Service. Um, a typical day on days that we're producing newscasts is that you'll come in at 8.30. Um, we'll talk about what's going on. What ideas do you have for the day? What interesting stories are out there that are not talked about, that are not on the docket that everybody else is covering? Those enterprise stories. We'll talk about those things that are scheduled from the wires and from press releases from the governor's office or the White House or whatever. We'll talk about which are important, what we should actually spend our time on that day. We'll give you guidance on how to go about covering it, what research you need, even the details down to what does your video look like, what does it sound like, so that going out of the door, you have a real strong sense of how to make this a strong, compelling piece that people will watch. Um, you'll go do the stories, you're back in contact with me throughout the day on a number of things, how the story is going, any changes that are happening, um, you've got your sound, you've got your pictures, you've got your interviews, um, shooting a stand-up in the field, that's where the reporter is on camera, and then before you come back, checking in with me to see how everything has gone and to make sure that you haven't missed key components of a story. Get back, look at your video, write your story, we go through script writing in detail, nothing goes on the air without me looking at it and giving you feedback every step of the way. So how is it shot? How is it written? Let's rewrite this. Can we say this differently? Can we make this more interesting? Um, obviously making sure that it's all fact checked and correct and things like that. And then you'll edit your story. And then you're constantly looking at the clock because we know that we have a deadline coming up, right? And you just get in the habit where it's, it's, it's a process that begins to become very automatic for you. 
um, and our deadline is 6.30 for air. And in that process, you might be cutting teases for the newscast. You might be cutting headlines for the newscast. You might be doing a number of things, um, typing up a digest, giving me a sense of what that story is about so that we can send it out to clients who might be interested in picking up that story. And then the newscast goes on the air. We do have anchors from this group of students who anchor the newscast, and that could be two or four students per semester. If you are on set doing your story as a reporter debrief with the anchors, that's a different preparation. Or you might say, this is going late, you're not getting back in time, we're going to send someone to you on Capitol Hill where you'll do a live shot from Capitol Hill, and that's a very standard thing, it's not that big of a deal. But so as the day progresses and your story gathering and information change, then you adapt and you do what's best in terms of what's best to tell that story because at the end of the day, what's important, what's informative, what's interesting? What do we want people to know about and how do we want to do that? And sometimes what you go out thinking at 8.30 in the morning will change and that becomes something different later that afternoon but at the end of the day, the goal is to make sure you've used all your resources and skills and abilities to present that story in a way that's most meaningful and digestible for the people who are going to watch you. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of fun. So if you've done the math there, your day will start at 8.30 and go until 7.30 in the evening and that's just not that big of a deal. We don't meet on Mondays, we don't meet every Friday, and when we do meet on Fridays it's for a couple of hours and that's when we bring in professional people from the industry to talk about a number of things. We'll start talking about building your resume reel and things like that. And so those seminars are meant to make sure that in addition to the skills and executions that you're doing during the week, you stay connected to the industry and that when you leave here, you are ready to walk into someone's newsroom and blow them away. So this is our newly revamped broadcast studio. This is where CNS films live at 6.30 every Wednesday and Thursday. Um, as you can see, there are two anchor seats. And there's also a sports anchor on every show, which is what I do on Thursdays. We stand over there to the TV. We just broadcast everything about that. Um, this studio is also where we film the Left French TV, which I am a reporter, anchor, and senior producer for, as I said in the beginning of this tour, and I also run on social media. Um, some fun facts about the Left Bench. We cover every Maryland sports game, um, so we go to them, we film them, we go to post-game interviews with the coaches and players, um, we put it all together in video and we broadcast it out on all of our social media for everyone to see our coverage of the games. Um, we do features with coaches, players. I just recently did a big feature on the gymnastics head coach and how he considered a legacy of his father who was the coach before him. So those are just some examples of all of the outside activities and opportunities that students here at Merrill can have. Um, I really personally have enjoyed all that. Um, I think they're really what make you a great journalist and Merrill really wants you to have those. Um, just some other fun facts about the college in general, which goes to show the opportunities you have. We send two students to the Super Bowl every single year, and we also send two students to both the Democratic and Republican conventions. Um, so there's some awesome outside the class, real world opportunities that you can get because you're a Merrill student. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all we have, and thank you guys for coming on this virtual tour with us, and we hope to see you in the fall, where you can become Merrill Mate.